Hey Amy. Tell me about this p-value thing. Why do you ask? We're doing this thing called hypothesis tests, and, when my instructor started talking about p-value, my head began to hurt. Well, it can be a bit confusing. Even professors have been known to explain it incorrectly. Maybe that's my problem. I wish. Let's do an experiment. Ah, if we must. I'm going to toss this coin. Okay. I like gambling. It came up heads. What do you feel about that? I'm okay with that. After all, there is a 50-50 chance it would come up heads. Why do you say that? Well, there are two possible outcomes, heads or tails, right? And either one could come up. That is true if the coin is fair, and does not have two heads. What? Okay. Show me the coin. No. Let's keep going with the experiment. You will have to assume the coin is fair, if you want to decide if the outcome is likely or unlikely. Oh, wait. That sounds like that null hypothesis thing my instructor talks about. Exactly. The null hypothesis is what we believe to be true while we evaluate the outcome of our experiment. But couldn't you be cheating? Couldn't that be a two-headed coin? It could be. But if I assume the coin is fair, I could be wrong. True. But you don't have any information yet to believe the coin is not fair. If I keep tossing the coin, you will get more information about whether or not the coin is fair. So, if I assume the coin is fair, I can say each toss has a 50-50 chance of coming up heads. There, you have the idea. I'll toss it again, heads again. Is that unusual, two heads in a row? Not so much. There was 50% chance of a head on the first throw and 50% chance on the second throw. That's right. So, there was a 0.5 times 0.5 or 25% chance you would get two heads in a row. That calculation is correct only if you assume the coin is fair. Right? Huh? I would not know how to find the probability if I did not assume the coin was fair. All right. I'll toss it again. Wow. Heads again. Is that unusual, three heads in a row? Well, 0.5 times 0.5 times 0.5 gives a 12.5% chance of three heads in a row. I can live with that. Okay, here's a fourth toss. Heads again. Now this is beginning to get funky. There's just about a 6% chance of that happening. I'll bet you $10 the coin is fair? I don't know if that would be a good bet. The coin could be fair. I would be betting the coin is not fair. Yes. The alternative hypothesis. A fifth toss. Heads again. Five heads in a row. Wow. There is just about a 3% chance of getting five in a row. Yes. Assuming the coin is fair. Are you ready to take my $10 bet that the coin is fair? Almost. Toss it one more time, and if it comes up heads again, I'll take the bet. Why then? Because the chance of getting six heads in a row if the coin is fair would be about 1.6%. Almost 99 to 1 odds against that. So, getting six heads in a row would be enough evidence to make you reject the null hypothesis that the coin is fair, and you would accept the alternative. Yes. I would bet the coin is not fair if you got six heads in a row. So where would you set your significance level, Alpha, for this experiment? Remember. Alpha is 1 minus the level of confidence you need to feel comfortable in making the bet. Well, I really started to get comfortable with the idea of taking the bet after 5 heads in a row. So, I guess I would say my alpha is 3%, as that would give me a 97% confidence the coin is not fair. So, if we got 6 heads in a row, which has a 1.6% probability of happening with a fair coin. Wow. I think I understand. The p-value is the probability of getting an unusual result if the null hypothesis is true. Almost exactly correct. But what if we got seven heads in a row? That would be more unusual but it would not change my mind about rejecting the null. I have enough evidence at six to believe the coin is not fair. So, the p-value for this experiment is 1.6%, which is the probability of getting six or more heads in a row out of six tosses. You are starting to make my mind hurt. But I see the p-value is less than alpha. That means I should reject the null hypothesis that the coin is fair.
That is correct. So, tell me again how you define the p-value? It is the probability of getting a very unusual result, or an even more unusual result, if the null hypothesis is true. The more unusual part bothers me a bit. I know, that part is a little fuzzy. I'll explain why that part is true in more detail in the next video. For now, just remember that definition. No. Wait. I want to see that coin. So sorry. But that is not how hypothesis testing works. You mean I don't get to know if the null was true? You got it. Later Gator.